Susan Nichols here. I have a tidal pool painting that I'd like to share with you from a reference photo by Armando Coles. He's a friend of mine in Miami. Beautiful photograph. And the painting is done in golden acrylics on a Frederick's Pro Canvas. Uh, it's a few hours long, but it is a step-by-step -step with details and a few places were speeded up uh, so as not to bore you with my brush strokes. And those parts are accompanied by music to make it a little more pleasant. Uh, I'm not a videographer, obviously. I tried my best and I don't have two cameras for uh, showing my palette while I'm painting. But I did try to focus on the palette or show my palette when I was mixing paints to make that uh, a little bit easier. I did this because, well, I did the video because I know some people like to uh, see the process of painting the picture and maybe follow along or come back later and try it for themselves. And that's good. I hope you do. Uh, do subscribe and leave comments if you would like to see more. So enjoy and have fun. Today I'm going to be painting from this reference photo by Armando Coles, who is one of my friends that lives in Miami. I'm gonna do my own rendition of this using Color by Felix techniques for blending the background and then work on putting a few little clouds in there and some reflections in the tidal pool. I will show you my palette. I use a Stay Wet palette. The papers in it can be used over and over again. And it has a sponge. It helps to keep the paints moist and I have a very large one because I'm very messy with my palette. And I have a variety of fluffy brushes. Color by Felix sells these. You can also get them on Amazon from Connoisseur. And I have many of those because I use a lot of them in my blending. I have a couple of handy palette knives for mixing paints. I have two plastic containers of water and I'm good to get started. For my background, I have a large amount of white with a little blue, medium amount of white with a little more blue, small amount of white with even more blue. And then I have yellow ochre with some white for a lighter color in my sky. And I have a white with a yellow ochre and a little blue. And I'm hoping to get a nice sort of water green tinge out of that. And we'll see what this turns out like when I get it mixed up. Okay, what I have here are three shades of blue. I have a light, a medium, and a darker blue. And then I have a yellow ochre that's a little pale, but I believe it's a little more saturated with yellow than I want it to be. So I'm going to add a little more white to that. And then this turned out to be a really nice shade of uh, blue, yellow, green, sort of a soft green, greenish blue. Uh, that will make a nice watercolor with these, I think. I have taken about half of that saturated yellow ochre and moved it over here. And I have taken about half of it and I'm mixing it with an equal amount of white. And we'll see if that lightens it up a little bit. I think I'm going to use 
number six. I'm not going to go as big as a number eight to apply the paint. This is the number six connoisseur. And I'm just going to dab it in the water. Squeeze it out. It's a little wet. Dab it in the water again. Squeeze it out. Just so it drips. And I have put just a little bit of an imaginary line here. But I think my... This might be a little dark, but let's see how it goes. Background color. And I like to get the paint on pretty quickly. So I have some yellow ochre in here. Let's put that on there lightly. Now, I'm going to start with the lighter blue because I want that lighter blue at the bottom of my sky, a little into the clouds there in the water. And I also want that lighter blue down here which will be in my tidal pool. A little tidal pool down here. A little more green. A little water. I'm pretty heavy handed with my paints. So sometimes I get more paint on the canvas than I want. That's okay. I'm going to rinse this brush pretty good this time. Go back into that blue. Light blue up here. Get some medium blue. Medium blue. Some more of a light blue. Medium blue. Most of that light blue off from here. Get the medium blue. Medium blue down here. I think I need a little bit more water on my canvas just to help that paint glide. faster I work, I know the easier it's going to be to blend. Now I'm going for my dark color. And I want it rich and dark down at the bottom. There'll be some even darker colors on here. I can get the underside of my canvas when I'm done. Got a lot of paint on here. I'm hoping this paint blends out. I'm not sure why I have bubbles in here. Some lighter here. And the darker at the top. And I will probably go back over the very top of this with a glaze because I really want to darken it up good at the top and at the bottom. And, sewer. and I'm going to start with my lighter colors and just blend them out. See, I'm getting hairs in there already. That's like a bone of contention with me. If 
bring that lighter color into that blue. Now here is where I will change up my brushes. And the reason is once my brush, I, I put my paints on pretty heavy handed. And once my brush starts loading up with paint, it doesn't want to blend well. And getting that paint off is easier with another brush. Now, I personally would have preferred a brighter, whiter part right through here. But what will happen, I will darken that up. Those hairs will come out when it dries. But I will darken that up with a glaze on the top edges when I get ready to get a glaze on there. I think I need another brush here just to get that out of there. There we go. That's brought some of that green down into the water area.
And I'm pretty content with that. Now, I will keep my reference photo so I'll remember what all of these marks are about. And when we get ready to put the detail on the palm tree, we'll be able to see where the leaves went. So let's just flip this up and see what we've come up with. There we go. I don't know if you can see the marks on there. They're very faint, but they're there. And it's watercolor. So when it gets wet with the paints, it will dissolve into the paint and you won't see any lines. Some people use graphite on lighter colors because it's dark. Sometimes the graphite can bleed through your paint, but not if you put the paint on pretty thick and I'm pretty heavy handed with my paints. So there you go. Now we're ready to start painting. So what I have me here is uh, just regular paint tape, like you would use to cut in if you were painting a room. And I'm going to make sure this canvas is good and dry. I've let it cure overnight. So I'm gonna put this because I really want my horizon line to be as straight across here as possible. And to make sure it doesn't bleed under there, scratch it with my finger. Now this blue that I have on my palette is slightly wet and I've added a little brown to it. I want to gray it out and I'm graying it out to use for my clouds. If it gets too gray, that might be a little too much brown. I'm trying to make a blue gray and it, it's just for the, uh, for the horizon line. I've got some more blue over here. It is a lighter. I'm going to put all that together. If it's not blue enough, I can add a touch of blue and white. Because those are gray clouds, but they're kind of blue-gray clouds. So the the burnt umber, just a tiny little fleck of burnt umber is all you really need in there. And then that is going to be a gray, but I think I want a little more blue in it. Didn't have quite enough blue left. I'm putting just a tiny dab of this ultramarine blue, and it is an open paint, so it takes longer to dry, but it gives you more working time. And it's easier to put a little bit of dark color into your light and mix it in. Just a dab, tiny little speck, and mix it in than it is to get the blue out. So, okay, that's a blue-gray. Still don't think it's a dark enough blue. There might be too much white in there. So I'm going to add a little bit more blue. I might have gone too blue with this. We'll see. Put some of this white back down on there. So I put just a little tiny bit of some white that was left and added a little bit more blue. Now I'm getting more of the blue gray I wanted. Might have more white than I needed. 
And I can add just a tad of brown to darken it up or a tad of black. That's a blue gray. I think just the tiniest little tad of black will darken that up to the blue color I want. The only carbon black I have is a an Atelier. It's an old tube of paint. And I don't want but just the tiniest little dot of paint. I'm going to barely squeeze any out. Let it drop on there. Black goes a long, long way. If you ever add black, add it in the tiniest amounts possible. In fact, I may not even use all of that. We'll take about half of it and see if it darkens it up good. I use it all. All right, now we've got a, a good dark blue-gray. There we go. And that's still a blue-gray, but it's a, a darker blue-gray. There's so many shades of gray. And a neutral gray is more of a silvery gray. And a blue-gray. Let's take this and look at it relative to my... Yeah, that's about the right color gray that I want for these clouds. And I'll, I'll be highlighting them a little bit with some lighter blue. Now, the tricky part here is finding the right brush to use. Okay, what I have here is... And you can't really go by numbers, but this is a small number two bright uh it's just a flat a thin flat brush it's very small this is to put my horizon line on this is a number two detail brush it's just a cheap detail brush well it's not cheap it's a it's a princeton but i think i picked it up local i uh, didn't order it online or anything <clears throat> this is a princeton also you can find princeton online this one's been left in the water too much but that story of my life. The first thing I want to do is get this brush wet. Okay, then I'm going to touch it into my gray paint. And very carefully, I'm going to put a straight line across the top of my tape where there's just a little bit this is my horizon line. It's not so important that the horizon line be straight on top because as I mentioned before, there are some buildings. There are some buildings up there. But you definitely want that horizon line to be straight on the bottom. So, just come across here and get that horizon line in there. And I bring it right up to make sure I've got it right up to the edge of the tape. I want to make sure I'm going over the tape, but not too much over the tape. Because it is a super thin horizon line. Super, super thin horizon line. And just to get some of these little buildings in, I'm going to turn the brush sideways and put a few little, few little dabs. There's some buildings back there. You can barely see them. Little dabs, dabs there, and a little building over here, maybe, that's on my horizon. I think there were some signs of a building back here. They're just tiny little dots, 
Some people wait for it to dry. I don't. If you take it off pretty quickly, it doesn't tend to leave any marks on there. Clouds are not my forte, but I will put some up here. And we will. Let's see. I don't want my cloud line to go. I want my cloud line to be in there somewhere. Let's get my cloud, the bottom of my cloud line. And some cloud line. I don't know if you can see that close enough. I'm just sort of putting a dotted line. It kind of comes down almost to the horizon here. Put my brush in the water, get it good and wet because these clouds are... To make them look puffy, just put some... Got those clouds pretty fluffy. I'm gonna fluff this one out a little bit. I don't like the way he's looking. Make him a little rounder. Yeah, that looks more like a cloud. A little rounder. Okay. Now, I don't want to get too heavy-handed with it. Sometimes less is best than they puffed out ever so high. And there's some little, little stray pieces of cloud up here. Put some of those in. Little stray clouds up here. Not very high, but some little touches of cloud off in the distance. The little ones back there. And maybe a little bit one there. Little stray clouds in the distance. And we had some we had some pretty intense cloud up in here by the palm tree. Again the palm tree is going to cover most of that. But I'm going to put some little clouds in here. So. We do have some. 
in the background. Some little cloud over here. Get that fine point on this number two. Let's see if I can put a little bit of a fine point in there. There we go. Some cloud there. There we go. That was sort of a messy bit of cloud that's up in here. This white color blue and lighten that gray up a little bit. Some, yeah, some lighter colors up here. And what I have done is taken some of that lighter blue and just dipped it in the gray to give a little bit of a we've got another cloud that's going to go in here and there's little pieces broken off of it that stray but they're not so they're not so dark as the clouds at the bottom so what I've done is I've gone over to gone over to this lighter blue color that I had and I've taken some of this gray and just mixed it in with some of that lighter color blue to get a lighter gray and there is a bit of a gray in here maybe a little darker than that some tad darker Yeah, there we go. A little darker. Kind of a blue-gray. And there was some more of that up in here. Now, your paint colors will always dry darker than you're putting them on. So, it's a good idea if you're putting on a dark color to come back and highlight with some lighter colors. Now that these are a little dry. for any spot that is to the left of the cloud. Zoomed out. Zoom in where you can see the highlights on those clouds. Just ever so slightly putting in a little lighter color in the edges and tops of the clouds to give them a bit of a highlight. And down here, we've got some sort of a gray area that's pretty much the same color as the clouds down here in the water. I think that's just a reflection of the shoreline, but I'm going to put it on here already. Just a little bit of gray. That's since I have the gray out, I'm gonna put that on there. A little gray in that water. I do think I need to put some highlights on this. I know you'll laugh because we're gonna cover most of this up, but 
I still think that it needs some highlights in here because that's the way clouds are. Got some highlight in here. And, and these are details that you probably won't see if you're standing far away from the painting, but you can certainly see it up close. If we zoom out, it just looks pretty much like we have gray clouds, which we do. I have decided that I want to thin out my horizon line just a little bit before I move on to the sky. So if you remember, I had that more saturated yellow ochre. It's still a light color. I've got some water on my brush. This is the more saturated yellow ochre. And using a wet palette, I can come back to it. This brush that I'm using for this is an angle brush, angle shader. It's a quarter inch angle shader. I'm not sure if it's going to work well, but we'll give it a try. It's got an angle on it, and I have a little bit more control with an angle brush than I do. I just want to thin this out some. I like that thin line better than the thicker line that was through there. And I like pulling some of that color in. So one thing I'm going to do to get a little bit of this magenta on there while that yellow ochre is damp before it has time to pull. And this is a crinacridone magenta and it is an open color. I just have a tiny tip of it on my brush. And I'm going to blend it with the yellow ochre so that it's a little pinkish, kind of an orangish hue. A little orangey hue to put in here. And that lets me blend it while it's still wet. Give it a little bit of orangey hue. Just ever so slightly. Blending in a little of that magenta. There's a little bit of that color under the clouds. And then go back to the magenta. Mix it with a little yellow ochre. Put a little of that color in here. Ever so slightly. I haven't taken the magenta off my brush, but I've dipped it in this blue.
because I'm blending some colors. And it's kind of a lavendery looking color. Kind of a lavender. Get a little blue on that magenta. You cannot do this on a canvas that has not dried good. It will lift your paint. So even if you have to wait till the next day to come in and blend some color in, you can do that. So that gives me some subtle hints of red in my sky. Okay, I'm good with that. There is a little bit of a yellow glow under all of these clouds, so I'm going to put that back. With the saturated. This is just the saturated yellow. More of a yellow glow under each one of the clouds. I just wanted to bring a little bit of a yellow glow back up under the edge of those clouds because that's the way it is. I've zoomed in to the top of the canvas and I've got some color here. I don't know how this is going to turn out. Some Sometimes my color mixing is not on target, but uh, I want to create an orange, so I have a little alizarin crimson, which might be too dark, we'll find out, uh, and some yellow to make an orange with a little white in it, uh, a glob of white, a little yellow, and a little less of the alizarin crimson. Then I want a much paler orange, so I have a tiny little bit of the alizarin crimson and a blob of the yellow and white about equal and then I have uh, a little alizarin crimson and white here with just a speck of blue to see if I can get me a lavender color. I'll show you what I came up with and I'll show you what I'm going to do about it. And you don't have to use the paints I have. As long as you're mixing a yellow and a red and a white you're going to end up with orange and the more white you add the paler uh, your color is going to be, and let's see, I want a little more yellow. I'll show you what I ended up with. Okay, here's the colors I ended up with. Now, I think that my lavender needs a little more white to make it a, a little paler lavender, and I believe this yellow color needs a little bit more cad yellow, and maybe a touch of just a bright red, like a naphthal red or a cad red. And then this other orange, I want it to be a lot more vibrant than that. That's got way too much white in it. So I'll probably split it off half with something else. Okay, on my colors, I'll show you what I ended up with. I took that um, yellow ochre I had up there and I mixed some cad yellow with it and that brought out a little of the orangey hue uh, because the yellow ochre has a bit of red in it anyway. So I had me a lighter, uh, brighter yellow color for some of the highlights on the cloud. And then I have here uh, the original 
light orange and I've added a little naphthol red to it. Make it a little peachier. It's a more peachy orange. Um, I did put a little white in here also to bring it into a peachy color. So it's red, yellow, and white to get that peachy color. And then down here, I just added the naphthol red. Uh, again, it still has some magenta in it, but the naphthol brought out more of the peachy color I was looking for. Uh, lavender, I pretty much left alone. I didn't add anything to that. Uh, let me have it. All right, now, and I think as a base coat, I'm going to go with, uh, for a base coat, I'm going to go with this, this middle, middle orange, the, the more peachy color one, and it's going to, and, and I am detail oriented to a fault. A lot of my instructors are, let's see how that looks, that's, that's a sort of a peachy color. Get some of that on there. And a little bit up there. I'm not sure about that one. That one's going to be more pink, I think, than peachy. And this is still wet. This is still wet. I'm going to put just a tad of this sort of lavender blue up here. That's the lavender color in there. It looks peachy because it's a kind of blend in with the peachy color. It's actually a lavender color. A little peach on the I'll, I'll sort of blend through all this here in a minute. I don't want much of this here. And I put a little bit of the lavender out in here. Okay. Let that out. I'm just going to sort of dab through that. Wispy clouds in here. Gives it a more wispy look. Let's take some of that off. Okay. Now, um, the brighter, the brighter orange, I'm going to put in some of the highlight areas here. And I may blend some of this brighter orange with some of that lavender. To tone it down a little bit once I get it on here. Let's see. We also have, well, I'll use that kind of pinky color for that. We have some yellow. Going back to the lavender, make sure I have the orange off the off the brush. I'm going back to the lavender, get a little of that in there. This clouds can look any way. Your cloud doesn't have to look exactly like my cloud. It's just a sparse little bit of cloud. And I'm going to use my little lavender tip brush to kind of blend it out, make it a little fluffy looking. There's some little fluffy cloud in here.
Okay. Let's see. I'm going into my bright yellow color. And this cloud is kind of fluffy here. I'm blend him out. It's underneath the cloud. And there's just a tiny bit of that yellow on my brush. I'm bringing it in here. It's a lighter color. Now this paint is going to start lifting if I'm not too careful because once it uh, starts to dry, it'll start to lift. And that's a, kind of a, it gets tacky. And once it gets tacky, it will lift off the canvas and make your canvas have a really ugly spot. So, um, See, that goes up, and then kind of down, then kind of get some of that lavender again. I may even come in here with some paler, almost white colors to this is a lavender color again. Little wisp. A little wisp of lavender here. And there's some little dots of it here and there. Put that much on there. Okay, now over here we have some gray clouds that also have a bit of lavender in them. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up a little of that gray that we have. Um, the dark gray that we have, and I'm gonna mix some of this lavender in it. So I can kind of blend a, a sort of gray, lavendery color out of that. There we go. And these also have some of the beautiful highlights. And the highlights come from the red in the sky against that yellow sun. So I'm going to go with a middle orange. The middle orange is kind of peachy. If this is too deep, we'll back off and put some yellow in here. But that's pretty. Might be a little deep, but I'm getting a little yellow tone in there. This is the sunlight coming off of it. And then I'm going to fluff it out with a little bit of the yellow. Let's see if I just put a little bit of yellow highlights on it. A little bit more of that lavender in here. Yeah, put that lavender out there. Bring that up a little bit. Make it look a little fluffy. Uh, that's too much. Get some of that gray back in that. And fluff up that gray. Let's make it look more like a dark spot in the cloud. Add a little color to that side of the canvas.
a little lavender color and then it's going to top some of those clouds. Okay, that's sort of what we were looking for. Just a, a mix of color there. That quinacridone magenta makes the most beautiful pink when it's mixed with white. So I'm going to try just a touch of it with some white. It'll get me a little pink going on. I just put probably about that much on this little bitty quarter inch brush. I'm going to mix it with uh, about a thumbnail of white. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's going to give me a good highlight color for the clouds. And it will be definitely much deeper on the clouds that are, there'll be a lot more magenta in it on the clouds that are down in the tidal pool. But let's put this up here. It'll be a, a lot more. That's a pretty pink. Yeah. A little pink, pinky, pinky color. You know, we've got some wispy, wispy up here. And out here. Some little pink highlights here. Yeah, I like that pink. So, there's orange back there. This is a fairly translucent color. And we've added some pink. And that pink is very pretty. I don't want to put too much there. For some reason, it ended up being kind of a blob. I wanted that to be less of a blob and more of a, like a little wispy separation from the, from the other cloud instead of a, a blob. Let's see if we can get a little pink back on there. Yeah, that looks a little better to me. A little more wispy looking cloud there. All right. I'm kind of feeling like I'm going to take some of this back out. I think I went a little too far to the edge of the canvas. There's sort of an angle on that cloud. And again, that's the joy of painting acrylics. You have the prerogative to do this if it hasn't dried good. I'm just wiping out some of the edge of the cloud back here. And that's uh, taking some of that out. It's a little less a little less dramatic. And uh, there's some pretty colors in that cloud that I don't want to lose. But I do want to make it look more cloud-like, so I'm taking I'm taking out some of the some of the color, and uh, I had it coming a little too deep to the canvas over here to the edge. There is some color in here that I will put back. 
Again, here I go being detail oriented. Yeah, that little bit of orange looks a little better. And there. There we go. Yeah, I like that better. Put a little bit of orange up there because the sunlight is grabbing it. And the sunlight is grabbing that piece there. It's kind of coming up. Sunlight. It's over here. Sunlight. Do a little, whoops. There we go. That's good. Happy accident. I wanted some peachy, wispy looks up there. Make a little, a little more cloud like. Makes a little blue. Paint always dries darker. Yeah. There we go. There. Now, what I did, I mixed a little of that, that gray with some of that magenta and white we had mixed up to make a pink. And I just went back and kind of dabbed over some of the darker areas to bring them up a little bit because it is a, it's a gray, but it's not quite as dark as that, that gray that we have down at the bottom. Not, not as dark as that. It's more like a lavender than a gray. That looks pretty good. Put some of this. Now I'm going to add just a tiny bit of highlight underneath there. Just a tiny bit. Tiny bit of highlight with yellow. A little highlight with yellow. I'm barely touching it with the yellow just to bring some highlights in. And I'm going to come up here and do the same. Let's see, we have a little yellow there. Some highlights. Some yellow there. And this across here. It's pretty bright. And I don't think there's whole lot this that's pretty bright that's pretty bright there I don't think there's much brightness going on in there maybe just a tad up here a tad right there just a, this is the bright yellow I come back and highlight it with the color in the sky has so much light. I just want to kind of blend some of these colors up. It's not going to take the paint away because it's it's a little damp. Got the yellow. Let me take a little bit of the yellow away. The, little, the brush is a little damp. It gives it, just makes it softens it a little bit. Kind of blend the edges of the paint so it has a softness to it. And it's not wet, the brush is not wet. It's just I've taken a paper towel and taken it out of the water and swirled it around to make it damp. And I'm just sort of blending out. What it's doing is blending out the wet edges of the paint that are on the canvas. Now that paint was almost dry, so it's not dragging the paint. It's just blend, softening out a little bit of the edges of the paint. Thank you. 
There we go. This is a very small cloud, so getting the white highlights on there. And that makes or breaks your cloud. So we're always going to have them on the left side. Tiny little detail brush with a tiny smidgen of paint on it. Let's see. Now, that's with a little white. There is a little white up in here. So I put some under highlights underneath some of that orange. There's a little bits of white. sun is down over here so we're bringing that through there and the white is translucent so it does tend to fade not seeing too many places where I've missed it might have got some out there oops not too much side of this cloud up here. It's drifting down in there. I said before, your clouds are going to look like your clouds. They're going to be totally different from my clouds. Just trying to get a little bit of color in the sky that we can put down in the tidal pool. So what I've done is I've just put some little stray blue marks in there to pull some of that background blue forward. So that it meets the eye as if the cloud is broken up a little bit. And that's more what I was looking for. I wanted that cloud to have some little areas in it where it's broken up. And not just a great big swipe of color. But okay. That's a little piece of blue. I don't know how he got on there, but we'll just work him out. I think that's supposed to be white in there. That was part of my 
part of my highlight that I put in there. And I went over it a little too much with some blue. And you can do it like this. You can, I, I like to do a section. I like to do a section and get all my, my detail. And then I'll come back to a, I do all my detail on one little section at a time. And once I feel like I can move on, then I will move on. But I wanna get all my detail done. And then some under highlights of white come along. And do some of that orange with a little yellow white color. Creep in there. White is getting a little sticky now. Bring it down a little bit. Sorry, it's different cloud. There we go. Let's pull back from this and see what we what it looks like. There we go. There are a couple of things that I would like to say about painting from a reference photo. Obviously, my clouds are different from the reference photo you see over here. And I think it's really important for people to understand when they're using a reference photo, you're not trying to recreate what the photographer captured in his image. You're trying to recreate what you see in what the photographer captured, which may be different. Uh, my cloud's a little thicker, a little fluffier, and it wasn't really an attempt to recreate that, but I was inspired by what he has here to create what I have here. So I just thought I would throw that in. Throw that in. I, I think that uh, too many times we get wrapped up in trying to, you know, get it exactly like what we see when we're doing our own thing. And I know, I know that's true for me. I do the same thing. And I have to tell myself, you know, this is my piece. This is not Armando Coles, he's the inspiration. His photograph is the inspiration. Two things that I am particularly challenged by are clouds and reflections, which is one of the reasons I chose Armando Coles paint, paint, uh, photograph to paint. I like to be challenged. I like to try new things. So uh, clouds and reflections, and now that I've got the clouds on there, one of the things I have found is pretty easy, uh, for me anyway, is to just turn the canvas upside down when I get ready to paint in the reflections. And the clouds are much lighter. I've put a yellow haze on these clouds in the sky to brighten them up because more sunlight is hitting them then there's no sunlight hitting the reflection in the water. This is going to be vibrant orange and vibrant magenta. 
much more so than up here. But hopefully, if all goes well, we'll maintain the, the same shape that we've got going here, pretty much. So what I have done with my palette, I've actually gone back and added quinacridone magenta to each one of the colors I already had. That's just to deepen them a little redder uh, to go in the reflection. And then I've also added this pyrrole orange. It's, it's a liquid color and it's not a, a hard body uh, like these other paints, but I may tip my brush in the pyrrole orange to get a little bit more intense orange to go in the reflection. I'm gonna put this pyro on. It's gonna be striking, but that's okay. Uh, I'll just kind of go through the middle here with some of the pyro orange. And that's a uh, pretty intense. I think there's a little bit of it up here. A little there. That's a very intense orange, and I'm gonna come down with the with the darkest, the darkest peachy color, and sort of tap that out. And turn that over and tap that out a bit. Now here, there's just a faint line in. And then this sort of, let's see, let's see how it's gonna go up. Right there. So this lighter orange, not the lightest. I think it's kind of comes in between the palm tree. Well, that's the, that's the second lightest. And this won't have a won't have the highlights in it that you see in the sky. And water. Let's see, there is a... Okay, we got that. And then we sort of have a straight line across here and it curves a little bit and comes out and down there. And then there's a, oops, oh, that's up here, okay, up above, kind of up above that other, and it doesn't have to be exact, of course, you know that, I kind of like how that looks there, and then I'm going to get some of the some of the lavenders around the edges. A bit of a lavender around the edge. The lavender really serves here as the highlight because I 
and parallel orange. It's really intense. We don't want to lose all that. I'll probably put some more magenta in here. Let's turn this around and see if we're going in the right direction. I'm leaving this out. This part here will be left out from down here. And the reason for that is that the the edge of the the edge of the soil, the beach of the tidal pool, is not reflecting that. And neither is that. So we have some little bits in here. Oh, I guess I should zoom out so you can see. I've pulled it down. I don't think I have that back far enough for you to see it. See it well. And I'm going to blend this out too. Just blending the hard edges off of it. Now, down here, I don't have I'm not going to have that's really the one thing I don't like. I don't want any of this haziness around it from the blending brush. So I'm going to take all that out. The blending brush softens the softens the uh, softens the edges but I don't want it to really put any paint on the canvas outside of the cloud uh, this is a quarter inch willows blender and it's a thick brush and I'm using the willows blender to just kind of tap in some of that magenta and, and pyro orange to intensify the center of that cloud. Just blending it out a little bit. I use this when I do portraits to help blend skin. And here I'm trying to define a line that has more of the magenta in it and a little bit brighter. Oops, didn't want that in there. Lift that off. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Get that brighter, deeper sort of color in here. Now I'm gonna go back to this lightest lavender color. So I think it's a little bit more intense than that pink color we have at the top. Some of this lavender in here. This is a very faint, faint color, very light color. Get some of that. Tap that in there. Tap a little bit in here. Kind of highlight those.
So this may not be a total reflected image of this right here. The palm tree is gonna be coming down into this. So it doesn't have to be specific. I primarily just wanted to get the, the colors. I forgot to turn the camera on, but what I have done here, I have the pyro orange and a little white in it. And I want to outline just that part of the cloud that cuts through the center. This is how I'm highlighting this cloud. It's a pyro orange with a, a little white to brighten it up. And that's going to take the darkness out of that cloud. I don't want to overdo it, though. Then it would just not look like a highlights it would be like painting the cloud another color i think there's a little of this right in here a little br brighter tip on that and i've got that there and that sort of helps to make the archway or the arch in it there's no intense color in this to speak of. The primary intensity is right through here. So that's pretty much all I'm going to do to that. Alright, now that, uh, again, that was the pyro orange with white mixed with it, just to bring some brightness into what's down in the water. That's about right. But that is misplaced, in my opinion. It's kind of misplaced. So. I'm gonna. So I'm gonna take some blue. I don't know if I have necessarily the right color blue. It's a little on the dark side. Lighten it up a little bit. Put some white on it. See if I can bring it up a little bit. I don't think that should be under there like that. And white is transparent. So unless I get some blue on here, I'm not going to There we go. I just think that was, that's too much there. So, I can always put another coat on there. And the reason I'm doing this is I, I kind of like that that's there, even though it's not in the photograph. I think it brings that around a little better. So I'm gonna put that right in here. Just ever so slightly, a little dot. And then a little bit of magenta on top of it. There we go. I zoomed back out here so you could see um, the cloud down here. I have added a little bit more. Um, I did this off camera. I didn't intend to, <clears throat> but I forgot to turn my camera on. But what I have done here is come along with some lighter color of the orange and just sort of knocked out a little bit of that red hue. I thought it was just a little too intense on the red. So I brought that, uh, made it not quite as vibrant red and softened the edges up with a little bit of, what this is is pyrrole orange mixed with a little white so it's a uh, uh, more in tune with the colors the pe peachy colors up here and it's just a little bit to soften those red edges up so it's not too terribly different i want it to be darker down here but not dramatically 
darker. So I'm just kind of lightening that up a, a little bit. Not a whole lot, but enough to see that it's the edge because up here, see how it's light around the edges? So I definitely want to do the same thing down here. Just didn't want quite so much red in it. Okay, I think that's, that's pretty much enough. The other thing I did off camera, I went ahead and <clears throat> took my serial papers and traced out the palm tree and some of the shoreline. And that's what we'll be moving on to next. I've been out of town for a couple of days and my Stay Wet palette was left uncovered, so everything dried up. Uh, one thing I want to mention to you is that this painting has been sitting for a couple of days now, and it's a good example of how everything darkens as it cures, as it dries. So you can see this is really a lot darker down here. I have set it up again. As you can see, we have the sponge, uh, the sponge and then I just went ahead and started with a new piece of paper because the other was pretty dry. So that's been, this paper has been soaked in hot water for 15 minutes and wrung out. And it's, a, it's damp, but not wet. And the Stay Wet palette is, uh, it's damp, but it's pretty wet at the same time. But uh, this is what I use to mix my paints in. And I don't have the colorful paints and when I originally did the colorful paints, I really made more paint than I needed for the small amount of painting I was doing, which was probably obvious. But as I said before, color match, color mixing is not my forte. Uh, I try to get the colors right, and sometimes I have to keep adding paint to get the color I'm looking for. I uh, can do small samples but and scale it up. But uh, this, is, uh, this is where we're going to start today, and we're going to use some dark color and along with my paints one thing i want you to understand is a lot of people get real particular about paints and brushes that instructors are using and you don't have to be with this you can use whatever paints you have that are generally pink and orange um for your clouds same goes with the dark colors it doesn't matter if it's uh i like to mix like a uh a brown and a blue and maybe a tiny bit of black to, to get a, a dark color. Sometimes I'll put a little yellow in there to give it a greenish hint if I'm going to be doing a tree, uh, in this case, a shoreline. And I'll let you know what colors I mix, but primarily looking for a dark color. And whatever colors you have to mix up that will be a dark color, I don't like to use the golden black right out of the tube because it, it's just really too glossy uh, for most paintings. It it stands out uh, separate from the more matte finish paintings uh, colors that we have with golden. So I would, uh, I would just try to mix up some dark color and that's what we're gonna go with. There's gonna be some grays and some kind of beiges and blue grays and red grays and, and such in here with the shoreline, but it's going to be primarily brown. So I'm going to have some, have some brown and some blue in my dark color. So what I have here, I have a fairly large amount of, uh, ultramarine blue, a little burnt umber with a tiny little tad of black. And then I put a little tad of, uh, yellow over here. That yellow gives a, a sort of a green, a greenish hue, but it's uh, it's not a lot of yellow, so you'll see a little green come into that. And we'll get this mixed up. I'll just mix it up right here and we'll see what we come up with. We're looking for a nice dark color. I think we've got a good one going. It's not really a gray. It's uh, a deeper color than gray with the I don't know if I'm going to add a little red. I want that to be a little browner. It, it does have some, some yellow in it, so it's got a, a hint of a green to it. Uh, like a really, really 
dark olive green. I'm gonna put just a tad of red in there to brown it out a little bit. This is naphthol red. Take them a second here. Now red goes a long way. I may have put too much, but we'll see. Uh, the red will brown it out. And anytime you mix your primary colors, blue, yellow, and red, you get a brown. We've already got the blue and yellow, so we're adding a little red. So it's gonna brown it up a little bit, I'm sure. Yeah, there we go. Now that's a good, rich, dark color. And it's uh, leaning more brown than than green, I think, now that we got that in there. I want a little bit of a green, but that's a good dark brown. It's darker than burn umber because it's got a little black and blue in it and uh, tiny, tiny bits. But that's a good dark color to start outlining with. And I'm going to use my little... Uh, my little detail brush, and another thing I will tell you about these brushes, you know, I pick my brushes based on my experience with my brushes. And I could tell you what brush to use. I have over 300 brushes, and anytime I try to follow a tutorial online, I try to use the brushes that they say they're using in the tutorial, and I never get the same results. So you will find the same is true when you try to do tutorials with me, you're gonna have brushes that you favor for certain things. I have two of them that I use for fine detail. And this one is, uh, this one is a little 20 zero, and this one is a lettering brush. This one's a script brush, and this one's a lettering brush uh, that's a 20 zero. So we have a 20, 20 zero script and a 20 zero lettering. The lettering has more of a square uh, end to it and it's actually for writing numbers and letters as the name implies. And then the script is also for, you know, making fine. It's good to sign your paintings with. It's a smaller, but I use them for fine detail too. And this one, this one here is a, it's a maestra or Maestra, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but it's a number two, just like this is a number two. So really you can't say, okay, number two, it's gonna be this size brush because every company has their own number system. So you just have to say, oh, does that look like it's gonna be fine enough? I'm not sure, this one's such a, it's not as hard a bristles as these. So it, it flows a little different off the brush, but these are the brushes I will primarily use for fine detail. And one of the things I want to do when I outline the shoreline, I want to use some fine detail and then I'm gonna come back in and shade it with different colors, but I need to get an outline going. Okay, I've got some light on the subject now. Uh, you can see the colors a little better. And I'm gonna start, I have my, I have my reference photo here, so I'm going to start looking at uh, what I have here. And I'm going to, this is, hopefully this will move a little faster than some of the other things we have done. Now, this bush is going to be done with a different brush, but this shoreline, I'm just kind of going through. Get a little water on my brush, a little of this dark color, and I don't want to. I don't want to put it on too thick. Uh, this brush might be thicker than I want. No, not really. That's coming on pretty good. Let's get a little. Uh, get a little color on for the shoreline. We have some rocks in here too that we're going to be painting on here. That's pretty thick, but that's okay. A little 
Ini. Get some more water, get some more paint. Sometimes I thin out my paint. This this is a this is gonna help me decide where to put my rocks. I'm gonna look at the photo. I've got them marked on here. Some little rocks in the water. Put them out here, different shapes. Put a couple over here because I'm not I don't have any guidance over here, but on the sides, but I'll get that on there. When we're all done with the painting and the painting has dried, we will take a wet cloth, a damp cloth, and we will wipe all these stray marks off from this serial paper that we use to trace. And you can make your rocks any kind of random way you want your rocks to be. Have some big ones, some little bitty ones, little little rocks here and there on the rocky shoreline. I think over here the rocks got even bigger. Uh, some big rocks up there real close to the shoreline. Some little bitty ones out here. Maybe little tiny ones. It's a kind of odd shaped rock here. And the rocks don't have to be lined up exactly like mine. Just put you some rocks out there. I'm trying to go as close to the reference photo as I can, but that doesn't mean it has to be that way on your painting do what you can and this is just going to be a little dark spot under that bush because you can't really see any rocks it's just more like shadow okay now some of these rocks will get some highlights and i mentioned this before but i'm gonna say it again because when you paint and you're painting in a particular light and then you move your painting to a room that has a different light, the painting is going to look different. <clears throat> the difference in lighting is going to change your colors. The whole picture takes on a different appearance because the light plays a huge role in what the colors look like. So if you don't highlight, you're going to end up with a really dark picture and they all look kind of dark from a distance i'm going with a smaller brush now just to get some finer line here this is the maestro number two let's get a little bit finer line going through here wasn't working with my big number two and next i'm going to come down with the same fine line but when you think about it, if you see light in someone's house on a painting and then you go to a gallery and you see that same painting, it's going to look different because the gallery lighting is often subdued with uh, light focused right on the painting, whereas in somebody's house, there's uh, different ambient light and that makes a difference. Okay, now this is my... My palm tree base is kind of going out a little bit with some darker color at the base of the palm tree. So I'm drawing that out here. And there's some, there's some dark color that comes across here. 
And these are just some basic sort of shoreline anomalies. I'm just kind of outlining where they come to. There's some sorts of sorts of streaky dark spots in here. And they kind of outline where the rock has built up. I haven't decided yet how I'm going to do all the rocky buildup on these little sandbar, not sandbars, I don't know what you call them, little, uh, little places where the water has sort of washed up some pebbles. And you get some different shapes from the different little wash areas on the beach, even on a bay beach. There's, it's not like a sandy beach, but you see, okay, now this is really kind of gray through here, but I'm gonna go ahead and outline it. We can always go over it because it's a dark color. This is a very interesting, I thought, feature because there's a there's a little wash up from the tidal pool that kind of follows this line and some little wavy areas right here it kind of comes down too much paint on there and just kind of Get some of that waviness in there. And it doesn't look real beachy yet. And again, this is just some guidance lines so we know where we're putting in. There's a lot of dark in here. I'm just going to kind of Give it a little, some little dark. I think over in here is a little grassy area. And right in here is where the line starts for the tidal pool. And there's a bit of water that comes up. It doesn't go as far as the bush, but I'm not gonna outline that little shiny part of that pool because the white paint is gonna do that, or lighter color paint, I should say. There is, however, a dark spot coming through here and a dark spot coming through here. They don't quite meet. And then along the edge of the tidal pool, there is a really dark spot in here that fans out. I might have made it too thick, but it goes out in that direction. There's a little dark area here around a little wet tidal pool. And there's another tiny little tidal pool here that's smaller. Bring this over here. And this gray, this gray, I'll bring it down farther now that I've redrawn my, I've redrawn my palm tree. Redrawn things on here because a lot of that gray is a shadow. A lot of that gray is a shadow from, I guess this foliage on this bush that's back here, this gray in here is shadow gray. So this is really gonna be beige in this section. And then there'll be some more gray here beside the palm tree, coming up beside the palm tree. Okay, I think that that's a, Fairly decent outline. And a lot of this is shore. 
behind the title pool. Now, I don't really want to outline my title pool with black. I might get a little shadow on it with a darker beige color. So, now I'm going to use this dark color again with a different brush to tap in some color around my palm tree to represent the shrubbery. You want to see what I'm talking about on the reference picture. This shrub in here, I'm just going to tap in some dark color and then I'm going to come back with some green and tap in some lighter green color and we'll get the palm tree drawn in front of it and we'll be able to proceed. The tidal pool is going to be the most challenging, I think, and down here, this shore around the tidal pool and the tidal pool area is probably going to be more challenging than getting the the uh, shoreline done. You can use a sponge to do this too. Either way, I'll bring some sponge over here and we'll see how to do it. We might use a sponge and we might might use a if you use a sponge, just get a little a little paint on your sponge and dab it on your you want to almost dab the paint completely off. Uh, dab the paint off on your palette. And you can come in and just sort of put some touches. And that's what we're doing here. You don't want the shadows to cover up. Now, I don't like the consistency of that sponge being all the same. You don't want to cover up your background totally. When you're putting these shadows behind your foliage, you want to bring it out, but you don't want to totally obscure. You want to let some of the light shine through. Have some, and then I'll come back now that I've got it sponged on there. It gives kind of an impression where I want my shrubbery to go. I think I need a little bit more. And this is where I'll come in with my brush. I'm rinsing out my sponge. I don't like it to get dry. It takes away from the shape of the sponge. I'm, I'm wetting. This is a, <laughs> a really affordable artist loft brush. And I like them because you can they're not well made in my opinion but they uh, you get a nice rough once you've used it a little bit it kind of roughs up and makes a a pretty cool design for tapping in tree leaves and bush leaves and I want to put some of those here my palm tree I don't want to get it so because some green is going to go in here too. Oops, I almost did that too much. Some green is going to go on here too. Just tap in lightly so. That's good. A little tiny dot up there. And see, I let the light shine through. We're going to tap in a little green. That's my shrub. Okay, and those are going to make some shadows, and we're going to, it's going to look a little thicker when we put our green on there, and I'm cheating. I'm not going to mix green. I, I, well, I am, but I have some of this uh, permanent sap green from Atelier. Yes. Some, some color. Eh. It can work for what we're using it for. I'm just making this shrubbery. And again, I don't want to tap away all the the blue back there. Because that's the light shining through. I've gotten too much uh, black on my brush. And you can wait until the black dries and then come back with your green later. You don't have to do it just like this right now. I'm going to take a little bit of this. 
green and just tap it in here. You can always come back and, oops, that's a little too much. Come back and detail it the way you want it later. I think that's too much too, but we'll a little green. Get some green on that black. There. Anyway, we have a brush, I mean a bush. Get some of this green over here on the side. I don't do a whole lot of finickiness with the sides of my painting. I just want to get some paint on there. Especially if I'm using a gallery wrap. Now you saw when we did the clouds, we mixed our own gray. And it's a pretty blue gray. It has a it has ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and white. And I do think that makes a pretty blue gray. Down here in this area around the tidal pool, we also have a blue gray. But I think I'm going to use some Payne's gray. Payne's gray has a blue base to it. And when you white it out, it does make a beautiful gray. I'll show you that in just a minute on a palette. A neutral gray, and this is the number five neutral, so it's right in the middle. And then I also have a zinc white. If I need to lighten something and I don't want to lighten it too much with white, I'll use a zinc white because it has a smaller pigment load than titanium white does. And it'll just give a hint of a lighter color. This area in here, according to the golden color picker. This area in here has some orange in it in addition to the yellow and gray. This area here is primarily yellow and gray and zinc white. This area here is the, uh, well, wait, not that area. This is a, the yellow, the yellow beige sort of gray. And then this area in here is like the Payne's gray. Uh, sort of color. So we're going to play around with this. We may change up what we're doing and do something different. So I hope you're not following along to paint. Maybe you've looked through it. Uh, we may change things. So I'm going to mix up some colors and I'll let you know what we've got. Let you know what I'm doing here on my palette. I have some neutral number five gray here and some neutral number five gray here. I put a little squirt of my liquid pyrrole orange here, and I put a little squirt of my uh, liquid yellow ochre here, or yellow oxide, I think is what it's called. It's the same thing as yellow ochre. And then here I've got the Payne's gray with a little zinc white, and then here I just took some of that dark color that we already had, and I mixed a little zinc white with it, or I'm going to, and we're gonna see what kind of grays we come up with this and get them mixed. Okay, what we have, this was with the orange and it created a, a, a nice rosy sort of gray because it has a little bit more yellow in it. I mean, sorry, red in it. It has a little bit more red in it to make a, uh, of course, to get that orange. So mixed with the neutral gray, it's a little hint of reddish and this is the yellow gray, and it's almost a green gray, uh, sort of green gray. I'd like to get that more beige. I'm not real sure what to do to, to get there. I may have to add some brown and white uh, to get that to beige up. This was the Payne's gray, and I love the color. I absolutely love the color, but I don't think the zinc white was enough to bring it up. I may have to add some titanium white, and same is true here. Our dark color didn't lighten up very much with the zinc white. So I'm gonna add some titanium white and see if we can bring these colors up. I put about a thumbnail each of the titanium white on these colors. We'll mix that in, see if we can lighten these colors up. I like this little, uh, it's almost gonna be pinky, sort of a pink color. Not quite, it's still. It's still pretty dark. That's good. That's what I want to see. I want to keep the color 
but lighten it up. That's more of a beige that I was looking for, for a beach color. A good beige. Okay, I don't have to worry about getting the paint off of this. I'm gonna lighten that one up with some white. It's almost too green for me, but it might work here and there. We'll see if it comes in handy. It does say most of the beach is yellow and gray, but I don't think I have enough white in it still. It's a beachy color, but not enough white. Maybe a little bit of brown added to that. We'll bring that up. Now, I don't want any paint on my brush when I mix these other two dark colors. Even though they're dark, I don't want to really contaminate them too much. And this is the Payne's Gray with a little more white. It almost looks like a pale blue now, and that's okay. That's good to go around the edge of the tidal pool. And we might split some of this paint off with this Payne's Gray and add a little bit more white, but I do want to keep some of this color. So I'll probably split some off and add some white. And then this, let's see if we can bring that up with some white. Yeah, it almost turns into a, it almost turns into a neutral gray. It's got a little hint of that blue in it. Yeah, turns into more of a neutral gray with all the colors we had mixed in there. So we've got some different shades of gray, different different hues of gray going on. And like I say, I'm gonna split that off and make one shade lighter. All right, I have, this is zinc white. It's not the titanium white, it's just the zinc. Kind of bring that up just a tad. So I don't want it too much brighter blue it'll end up being too bright but i wanted to bring that up just a tad so it's more of a gray blue we still have the dark and we've just lightened it up just a bit here and i like the way that turned out and then here what i have done is i have put the zinc white but i've also put a tiny little speck of burnt umber and again that's a dark color so i don't want to overdo it but I did want to take some, knock some of that bright yellow out and tone it down. So I added a little darker color to it. Just tone it down a little bit. It might not be toned down enough, but uh, I might have to do that again. No, I don't know. That's looking pretty good. We'll see what it looks like on the blue canvas before I make any more changes to it. And then this one, uh, the rosy color. I added some zinc white to this also to lighten it a bit. It's the one with the orange in it, the orangey gray. So I will call it the rosy gray. It's really orange, but it looks like a rose color, a dusty rose color. And then uh, we have our other gray there. Okay, so this was my darkest gray. It's my Payne's gray, my light Payne's, my yellow gray, and my rosy gray. I'm gonna go back to my trusty angle brushes, my angle shaders. And the reason is that, as I mentioned before, I, I like the control I have. They're cut on an angle so I can use the tip to get in tight corners and I can turn the brush in different ways. I can do a straight line with it if I need to, or I can shade in a wide area. And these are two different sizes. One is the quarter inch and one is the three eighths inch. And these are angle shaders by Princeton. I find them invaluable. I'm going to, I may put some more I'm not sure if that's brown enough. 
I don't think it is. I'm gonna put some more brown back on that brush. It's not red enough. These rocks in this shoreline are pretty red and they have some even brighter highlights. So I'll probably come back with some of that yellow oxide gray and highlight this a little bit. Yeah, that's a little more brown. It's a dark color and it will darken as it dries, but mix a little of that dark in there. A little bit of the brown. This is uh, the shoreline. Dark, dark, dark color in there. And it was pretty thick, in some places very thick. And then it was also kind of striated from over here, coming off that palm tree sort of running out into, into, it's a little thicker in there, kind of running out that way. This is the dark color we have on, the dark color we have with just a tiny bit of brown in it. And I don't have a lot of water on my brush, but I do have a lot of paint. Some brown in there. And this sort of comes along here. I don't want to make it too thick because I don't want to lose that that look of a striated beach there. The little places. I think there's one little spot where it comes down in here. Sort of like that. Up there. We have some more over here, sort of a dark area on this side of the palm tree and underneath the palm tree. There's this other little spot that's pretty dark. I don't want to get too close to the, to the white and mess that up. Okay, and we need to put some green. We'll get to that over here. This is all dark under here. Just turn the brush sideways and get some dark in there. Turn it back long ways and come to a point there. And a little bit faint in there. Okay. All right, and that's got some of the darker color on. And now I'm gonna come back with, I need a paper towel. I like to tap the water off once I put my brush, once I put my brush in the water and you hear this going on, what I'm usually doing is tapping some of that water off before I put it in my palette because otherwise it's too much water and water down my paints. So get the smaller brush. This is the quarter inch angle shader. And I'm gonna get some of this, this is the yellow Oxide, yellow oxide gray, yellow oxide and gray. And I'm going to put that in here. Got it turned at an angle. And it doesn't matter if it picks up some of the, some of the dark color that's already on the canvas. In fact, we kind of want that to happen, kind of blend it in a little bit. And get some of that darker color mixed with it. And if we don't have enough, we can pick up some of that dark color and just kind of, this is a darker brown, and just kind of blend it in with it and get the little striations going. And I think uh, down in here we have more of the rosier color 
and get some of that rosy color. This had the orange in it. So we're going to put that. Oh, I, I think I have too much water on my brush. That's why I need to tap it in. You need some water on your brush to help the paint move off your brush, but then too much. And there we go. Getting a little of that dark up in there. Some kind of rosy, rosy color to it. I'm doing this wet on wet, so you see how that dark color's kind of blending in with some of the uh, some of the gray paint. A little bit more of that rosy color. These are sort of striated colors here. It goes back towards the yellow oxide there. And over here, it's kind of rosy. Yellow oxide and the rosy color. Get our beach colors. When I come below this dark line here, I have to be careful not to touch that because that is my my water coming, trickling in. So I want to get some of this, um, let's see. I'm gonna get some of the neutral gray. That's this color here. Just the kind of neutral gray. It, it's not, uh, it's the one we made by adding white to our dark color. And I don't want anything else on my brush but that. So I'm going to wipe it off. And this is going to go closest to my water that is down here. I want to go ahead and outline that so that I don't mess it up with other colors. And this is all up in here. It's a gray, but I don't want to, that's where my little tidal pool runs in. So I'm trying not to, to touch it, but I want this gray color in here. Let me pick up some dark color and kind of blend it with it. So it's not, so it has some striation to it like normal sand does. It gives it a little texture so it's not flat looking. Anytime you're painting the ground, if you use some contrasting colors, you'll, you'll keep it from looking flat. And this is the light colored paints gray. This is the lighter paints gray. Put a lot of that color in here. And I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna strike that with some texture from some different colors. A little bit of the lighter shades of, yeah. I kinda, I don't wanna lose my shadow lines cause that's what these dark lines end up being. They're your shadow lines because as the soil shifts as the texture shifts the terrain shifts there's there's shadows that you see and that's what i'm trying to avoid covering up totally and i'm going to get some of this yellow the more yellow color put some put some little shades of this yellow into this gray not too much i don't want it to look like water i want to keep it looking like sand put some of this yellow over here but it's just a darker darker color so it's got you see any little white specks catch them 
you don't want that in your painting. I did paint an ocean scene one time and I did every little section, every individual section, I did uh, separately so that I could get all the different textures in there. And then down here, there's a much lighter color. And I think I'm just gonna use this straight, uh, straight yellow oxide gray to kind of come in here and lighten that up. That's pretty much the same color we have up here. It's a lighter color, kind of catching the sunlight over here. And I'm sure there's all different ways to paint a shoreline. This is what works for me. And I think we have a lot more of this rosy color gray over here. So I'm going to go, I'm going to kind of go underneath this little thing of water I have. Bring it out to right about there to the water's edge there. Maybe I can bring that around a little bit. So this is this color. Let me bring it over here. There's a little reflection of water right there. It's kind of shadowed. I want to leave it. And this is a, a gray. But again, there's a little bit of a... There's a little bit of water reflection. Like another little tidal pool starting over here. Let me put some of this yellow back on here. Bring it up in here. This is a rosy color, but it has a little yellow on the brush. Bring that in here. Put some of that darker color. I'm do the same on the sides. You don't see this, but it makes me feel better to know my sides are done. Okay, and there's too much blue showing through right there, so I'm just going to fill that in with a little color. There's some dark on my brush from the bushes over there. Okay, I'll get a little bit of this red off this, get a little bit of this pink off my brush. Kind of that orangey hue on that gray. And come back in with some lighter, lighter colors and brighten it up a bit. And this is a same with this blue down here. I'm gonna do that too. So dab a little bit here and there. Because the uh, dab it with the corner of my brush a little bit and get some. This shoreline is rough. It's not a smooth sandy beach. So we're having to kind of rough it up a little bit. Give it some striated. sort of dry brush and some color on here. Oops, that's too much. Dry brush and a little color on. That's very little paint on my brush and I'm just going through and dry brushing some color on. 
We can sort of stand back and look at that now. There may be some room for some little pebbles to come in. And we'll do that shortly. But I do want to get some very pale, some of this lighter color, Payne's blue, gray that we mixed and put some, just a little blue highlights in here. This is the lighter color Payne's gray. And there was like a blue wash to it in a couple of spots. And it even comes along this area here, kind of a blue wash, a gray blue. Um, that beach looks pretty muddy, and that's good. That's what we want it to look like because bay shorelines are not white sandy beaches. They look pretty muddy. And we've got some of the some of the lighter blue, the lighter paints, paints gray. I'm going to get a little white on my brush and pull some of this lighter paints gray out. to really be able to put some wet spots. I need some wet spots. I need some wet spots like in here. This is some of the Payne's, Payne's gray with the light color mixed with it and I'm just trying to get some some wet spots in here and the highlighted colors will make for some interesting little wet spots and there's not a lot but there's a little bit of wet spot up there and I think down in here there's another little wet spot I may have to go back and put my demarcation line on that one. This is a, another area where I'm going to put some blue, just a little blue on all of what we mix there. And that's to basically show that water has been there. It's not necessarily there now, but it has been there. I have a huge apology to make because when I finished painting the shoreline here, I flipped the canvas over like so, and I decided that off camera, I would go ahead and do the bottom edge of the canvas. And then I failed to turn the camera back on when I flipped it after it dried and I flipped it back over to uh, paint the front. So uh, I cannot give you step-by-step step how I did the title pool, but it's really easy. I used the darker of the two Payne's Blue Grays and I went around the edge with it all the way where I wanted it to meet the sandy beach. I changed a little of this so it would come up in there on a more horizontal plane rather than straight up. That didn't look right. So I had it coming on a horizontal plane around the edge of the, the beachy part because this is a real dark soil that's been wet around the tidal pool. And I left a little stream of the water coming through here. I went completely around the edge of the tidal pool. And then that, that was a really dark edge. So I took the lighter of the two Payne's grays and I came back through and softened that edge out to blend it in a little better with the blue. It's not really blended, but it's a lighter color. And it gives that soil there, that, that beachy part, a little more texture. And I did that all around the edge of the tidal pool. Now, as this is, this is actually a shadow of the bush. This gray here is a shadow of the bush. And if you like your tidal pool like this, 
that's perfectly fine. You don't have to do anything else to it. I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, another thing I'd like to do is take some of this dark color and I'm gonna take some dark color and all along these tide lines, these dark lines are where the seaweed has gathered, little pebbles and shells, all of these little lines uh, in here. Uh, when you see them out along the shoreline, there's bits of seaweed and rocks and pebbles and seashells. And so I'll probably put some dark splatters, just a few in there. And one thing I like to have handy, don't forget about this wet, wet rag. Have a wet rag. This is soaking wet. Uh, I've wrung the water out, but it is, you know, really a heavily dampened rag. And when I do the splatters, there will be some that come up here and I'll have to wipe that off. Now, ultimately, I'm going to come in here and put a little highlights on the rocks. Uh, that's another thing to do. If you want to speed through this part, you can, but uh, you can also watch it and make a decision whether you want to do this to yours or not. But uh, when I splatter these with the dark, which is what I'm going to do first, uh, there will be some stray dots that have to be wiped off in a hurry or or they will uh, look pretty silly out in the middle of your water. Oh, so I guess the first thing I'm going to do is try to get these splatters on. So I'm going to zoom into the, this is the, the beach we're going to put the first splatters on. If splattering is new to you, or even if it's not, uh, if you need to check the consistency of your paint, because you cannot splatter with a hard body paint. You've got to thin it out, and I just use water to thin out my paint to splatter. And you're gonna have to play around with the consistency. I I love my mixed media book. I don't know if you've ever seen these or not, but uh, let's see if I can find the front of it. This is the, the XL Carson, uh, Canson, Canson mixed media book. And I love it because I can practice and play around and I don't put any water on my splatter brush. This is the splatter tool that I use. It was an art sharper tool I bought in her splatter kit. And I just get a little paint on there so I can brush it off with my thumb and it'll splatter a few little dots on the beach. I just want some faint little splatters. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of paint on the end of my, end of my brush there and splatter it out. That's kind of how I want it to look. And, and here we go, just put some splatters on there. That's just to give it a few little pebbles. Now, as you can see, I got some paint down here in my other part of my beach that I didn't want. Just test it on my paper first and then bring it over here. I do better with my thumb. Oops, that got in the, in the water. Bring it up here and just splatter those on the on the beach is where I'm trying to splatter. And I got some out here in the in the ocean or this the bay. I don't want any splatter dots out there. You really don't want any in your sky. I'll put a few over here. Okay. Wipe those off that I don't want and keep these here that I do want there now that's just kind of a a normal looking beach with some you know rocks on it little pebbles put some up here there we go i'm taking them out of my water because i want my water to look pretty clear Take these out of here, because I don't want them up here. That canvas is good and dry now. And there we go. Those might be a little thick in there. That just gives it the look of some uh, pebbles. I don't really like these through here that much. I'm gonna take some of them out. I really want them right around the tide line. 
the tide lines is where the pebbles gather. So I've gotten this paint mixed up. And we're looking like this. So these dots are gonna go down there. And they're gonna look very white against that darker Payne's Gray. And that's okay, that's what we're looking for. And uh, I'm gonna use the splatter tool. I've watered down this paint tremendously so that my splatter tool works well with it. Okay, I'm gonna show you what I've done with my paints. Uh, they're pretty liquid, so I gotta be careful how I hold this. I thinned out, uh, this was that yellow oxide, and I cut it with some of this uh, Payne's Blue that I added the white to, and I really lightened that up, and I added a lot of water to get almost a liquid paint consistency. Well, that's kind of running off, it's a little, but uh, and this is, this is the yellow oxide I've added some of that lighter blue to. It's, it's Payne's gray that lightens to a, a light gray. So we have very light gray, very light gray, and we have a sort of beige color. And what I'm gonna do with my scatter tool, splatter tool, I said scatter, but it's splatter. I want to put these at the bottom here, across here just like little rocks, but they're coming off more like dot uh, sprays, and I don't want that, I want dots. That's good. These did real well. I like the dots over here. I don't want them out there. A little bit out in the water is good, but too many, not good. Okay, those came out real good. Go back to my splatter brush now that I've dried it off. There we go. Some splatters. Yeah, it seems to work better on a dry splatter brush. Get a little bit in the water there. I just want a little bit in the water down here where it comes to the edge. Let me go back through and wipe out some of the spray that went on too thick. Those will look more like rocks. I don't want it to be too much of a spray. Let me just tap some of that out so that we have more like a splattered rock. So let me zoom in on that so you can see that better. I can get this down here. Now maybe you can see what we're doing down here a little better. And now I'm gonna use some of this beige of a different color. Get some pebbles, little rocks on the beach, little rocky area. Now all of these are actually going to be painted over with a glaze. So their color is going to change, but I'm hoping it will give me some differentiation when I put my glaze on so you can see the pebbles in the water through the glaze. Nah, that's too, too much right there. Just take them, if you have some places where you got a little too much, just dab it out or if it's more like a line and we're going to put some of this super dark color on. Put some dark ones here. 
Just a few here and there. I'm just barely letting loose of a few. Uh, a few bristles at a time. I don't, I did, when I had a lot of paint on there and I wanted it to scatter, I let go of a lot of bristle. But trying to control it, I just let go of just a few bristles at a time. Control more where the, where the paint goes. Here. Even darker. Okay, that's good. And I'm good with that. That shows that there's some pebbles along the beach. The sandy beach. And some dark stones and some light stones, shell, matter, debris. Up in the beach. I didn't put much up here. That's pretty much mostly sand. We'll put some over here on the side. I did bring that. That would be more like the side. Now that we have the pebbles on the beach, we're going to move on to the palm tree. And as you can see, I did come back and trace the palm tree back on wiping the canvas so many times to get rid of the stray s pebbles from the splatters. I uh, got all them wiped off. Of course, it wiped off my palm tree tracing. So I lined it back up as close as I could get. It's a little farther to the left and that'll be covered up with the palm tree. And I took some black and green paint and just uh, dabbed that in a little bit to cover up the sky that I had left open. Uh, because the palm tree is a little farther to the left, but that's okay. It's close enough to where it needs to be. And um, we've got this traced out. I am using a paint. I'll show you on my palette. I, I really mixed up way more than I need, but it's a dark color. And I took what was left of the dark colors on my palette and just mixed them together. And then I have... a. Uh, I have a, a ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and a little black and a tiny little bit of yellow. And the little bit of yellow brings it up so it's a, a bit of a green color. It's black, but it has a bit of a green hue with that yellow and blue in it. And I like that because that uh, makes a nice dark color without being straight black. And we're just going to go right down here. I use my angle brush. I love this brush because I can put a straight line with the edge of the brush or I can fill it in. I'll do the left side first and then do the right side. Fill it in a little bit. I don't want it too thick, but maybe a little thicker than that. They do get bigger at the base. Whoops, that's too much paint on there. Wipe some of that off on my napkin. Let's see, go down a little bit farther out here. Don't want him to be too wide. Palm trees are skinny. Might go back up a little bit wider right here. Oops, that's okay. Got a bit of a bow there. Come back up. Take that all the way up to where the little coconuts are hanging in there.
I'm just taking out some of that extra paint from my line. Oops. Now I am going to switch over to my smallest detail brush. Now, I do have this one, which I might end up using. Well, I like to use this very small one to get a fine point. And I want each of these palm fronds to come out to a point. So I can thicken up the back of them and still get a fine point on the front of them or on the ends of them. <clears throat> I haven't put it together in the middle yet. I can do that. Get some water on my brush. The paint will come off your brush a lot easier if you have water on it. But also, if you need to thin the paint up with a little water, that's good too. Here on the island we have we have a a man that comes out and prunes our palms. Keeps them. See, I'm gonna go back down that one more time. That's just a dead frond that's hanging off. Okay, now I've just outlined that palm tree. And I'm gonna come in and put some more. Um Put some more leaves on it and the reason I'm putting the dark leaves on is to create shadow I'm gonna do this one first let's see let me get my my trusty ready to go uh, there he is my trusty angle brush some water on it get my trusty angle brush this is my reflection and I'm gonna have him down here and there he is
Okay, I want you to see what I'm doing down here. I felt like compared to the photograph, this was a little too high up, so I'm just coming through here and wiping out some of that black to thin it out because the water line comes to right here. It just didn't look right to my eye to have that much black down in there. We're gonna, this, like I say, we're gonna darken all this up, but I uh, wanted the defined line to end at the water line. So I wiped some of that out. There are a few things I did off camera. I wasn't totally satisfied with this area here. It just didn't seem to have enough pebbles in it for me. And again, this is gonna be glazed, so those are gonna be darker. But I just took some liquid white and liquid black and I went through with uh, dotting tools. Now, if you don't have dotting tools, you can use the tip of your brush if you want to do this. You can leave it alone like you have it. If you do want to do this, uh, you can use the tip of your brush and make some extra dots, or you can use these uh, dotting tools. That's what these are. I use these for making mandalas on art stones, and they have tiny little round balls at the tip. You can see that. Uh, have little round balls at the tip and they can uh, they can make some nice little dots. So I wanted to increase the pebbles I had at the bottom. The other thing I did and I have no idea how I did this but uh, somehow when I was looking at it I had three palm fronds going here and this one you don't see in the reflection because the reflection only comes to like right here but I put three on this side so I had to go back and add another palm frond on the top palm tree because I had an extra one in the uh, reflection so I also uh, mixed up some paint and all I did was I took some of and I've got a lot of paint here. Uh, I do that because it's hard for me. I took some of the darkest color and I added yellow to it to bring it up to a green. Uh, it took me quite a bit of yellow to get it that green. And then I added more yellow to get an even lighter green. And these are the colors that are gonna go on the palm tree. First, we're going to uh, use the detail brushes to get the, um, the dark color on. And then we're gonna use the medium green. The dark green or dark color goes on as shadow, then the medium green. And then the tops of these, especially on this side, are highlighted with the yellow green. And a few uh, of the yellow green will go in there to uh, show some highlights. And then we may come back and put a little bit more dark low lights and then a little bit more green color just to fluff them out a little bit. But we'll see how that goes.
we'll go ahead with this last palm frond and get this on here and here there's some there's some debris kind of coming in not debris but coming into that oops i don't want to cover up my coconut All right, let me start over. Let's do this in here. And I don't want to cover up my coconut, so we're just gonna come out here a little bit. And these are pretty straight all the way across, but this palm frond is kind of drooping down. So they'll come to the same length Maybe a little bit longer in the middle where it goes through the bend. Right in here. And then much shorter on the tip. And they're drooping, so they're kind of going in this direction. I've got to come back with my little skinny brush and put some sharper points on these. But I'm gonna get him in here. Darken that up. Darken that up in there. bit from the darker paint that I put up in there. Pull that out a little bit. Pull that out. And there will be some longer fronds coming down. Now that we have the dark on the upper palm tree. I'm going to put the medium green up there. Let me see if I can zoom in. I'll zoom in a little bit while we put this lighter color on. It's the medium green. My paints are getting a little sticky, but that's okay. This shouldn't take as long. So we're just kind of going to go through here where we already have the dark. And I'm using the super fine little brush.
And now that we have the medium green on, I'm actually going to go back with some of this black and the skinny brush and just put some little lines through. Not many. I want some brown on that. That is the, the brown. I mix a little brown with some white. It's sort of a reddish brown color. It's sort of sort of a dried up. This is just some dark umber I have on my palette. A little more brown than black. Got some of it mixed with a little white. This is a kind of a dead and dying one. I need to smear that right there. Dead and hanging. So it's brown and black and a little green, a little beige. Okay, that kind of looks like a dead frond hanging down. And I'm going to put a little of this very bright on the place to I've run out of places on my palette to mix color. Put some water with this and thin it out. I want to have enough paint on there for pigment but I also want it to be thin enough to flow pretty easily <clears throat> so we're gonna do I think it was this one yeah this one this one is almost all light colors goes over that there is a fine line of sunlight on this one it comes right around to there Again, we have the fine green line there. Some of these have some green light in them, light green. <laughs> There's a lot of this bright green right towards the center. You wouldn't think that dark a little too thick. You wouldn't think that dark center that palm tree would have any yellow in it, but it does. I put that on too thick though. 
very tip of my brush. Comes up there. green and tapping in here and seed pods and we're gonna get some I'm gonna use some yellow oxide on my coconuts just to brighten them up a tad take just a little drop here and use my number two brush so I can get some spread on it Oops, got some water on that so the paint comes off. This is a it's gonna look pretty bright in here. But I'm gonna I'm gonna put the paint on the coconut and then I'm going to oh I can't see where the other one was. It's down underneath here somewhere, right in there. Just dab it. So you got a hint of color. See what's going on there. Some little highlights on it. And then a little white, light color. It's just white. Put a little highlight on my coconuts there so you can make them out. Coconuts in the tree. A few of them. Okay. Now, in the shade, this tree trunk. Um, it doesn't have a lot of highlights, but it has some, and it's sort of like a gray ring. I uh, have a little bit of gray, and it only takes a dab. This is a real light shade of gray. And just whatever gray you have left on your palette, if you need to take a little black and mix it with some white you can do that or if you have some of that beige on your palette I'm gonna get some I'm gonna I'm 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 gonna dampen the tree trunk I'm gonna use this uh, a little gray on this angle shader just kind of pull a little some little rings through here this. Oops. Kind of went over there. Get some highlights on my tree trunk. And dampen that again. Get a little of this gray. Don't want it too wet. Almost like dry brushing. Just get a little paint on your brush and just sort of dry brush it, but there's some, there's some sort of rings to the tree. So, 
highlight it and drag it over with your finger. Highlight it on one side and drag it over with your finger. That's good. It's a little highlight. And all down the length of the, the tree. So you get a little edge of highlight right in here. Along that edge. So the sun is it's on there. And it gives a gives the tree a little texture. Pan back out so you can see that tree. We just went down through here and, and gave the tree a little highlight, drag it through. That's good. And the final thing I want to do is get some highlights on these rocks. And I think a good color to do that with is this sort of beige, beige gray. I like the gray. This is the, the lightest Payne's gray that we have on the palette. I'm gonna tap some of this on there and if I don't like it, I can wipe it off. But just to give a little, some body our stones and some form some form and shape you can use different colors I'm gonna try some of this beigey color out here that's a little more of a highlight some of this black just barely get some on my brush and just kind of shadow this in a little bit better and there's barely any paint on my brush but it is a darker color and shading that in some because it's underneath the bottom is darker and then with this really bright color that I have, now that I have it mixed up, I didn't have it before. But I'm gonna tap in some little bits of, and again, I just barely have paint on my brush. I'm just gonna tap in some brighter highlights to the top of this bush. I'm not going very deep with it, just on the very top few little few little spots of brightness on the top of the bush it's catching the sun so this out here might be shade there we go Sitting back looking at it. I'm sort of left with the feeling that my tree, once it was greened up, seems like it got a little flat. And I don't think I can do anything with that, but maybe come in with a little more black and get just some little curls of black shadow above where I put that green on. Do you see what I mean by flat? There's some flatness to it. 
that lost some of the leaves, lost some of their shape. In some areas, so I'm putting some shadow back and thinning them. Put some black back on there. Whoops, it's a little too much. So that the paint doesn't look flat. highlighted my stones and I've highlighted my tree trunk and put my greens and my browns on my palm fronds. So now I'm looking at glazing. <clears throat> what I really want to do is get some dark color uh, down here and <clears throat> maybe up here. I haven't decided. Uh, if I do, it might be a little phthalo blue glaze. There's a couple of ways to do your glazing. If you if you want to glaze, I suggest you get clean water because whatever pigment is in your water, if you do it with thin water, is going to show up uh, on your painting. And it'll show up in your water glaze. And the other way to glaze besides thin water is to actually use a glazing liquid. This is golden gloss glazing liquid. And if you don't have it, water is fine. I like the glazing liquid because I can keep pigment in an area where I've thinned it out or I can thicken it. And with water, you pretty much have just basically one dark color. But I'm going to do it both ways to show you how you can do it. And what I'm going to do, I have Payne's Gray. That is a very dark color, and I am watering it up. This is an Art Sherpa brush, and it's very watered. It's very watered down, very much watered down. And I'm just basically glazing in a little dark color. That's going over those dots that I put on. They're not really darkening up my... Just basically putting on some a thin coat of color. And that's as far as I'd want to take the glaze. And you can use your brush to get the get the strokes in there that you want or to get them out. And I like that. That's uh that's one way you can glaze. And you can leave it like that if you want. <clears throat> it works just to get some darker color on your on your little dots down there. Put a little bit more pigment down here. I'm gonna put some pretty dark in here. This area is much darker. Oops, big brush. Basically just putting on a top coat of watered down 
Haynes Gray, just to darken this out some. I don't want to take it much farther than that. In fact, I think maybe in the water. It's a very light color. And that's one way you can glaze. Bring some of that darker up here. You're just basically painting over the colors you already have to get a darker color in there. And my pebbles still show through. And you don't have to do this if you don't want to with your painting. That's perfectly all right. And now right here, I don't like that there's that line, so I'm going to thin it out some. Just bring that up in there, and I'm going to thin it out. Same here. Now if I had the glazing liquid on my brush, I would use the glazing liquid to thin it out here. I don't want to get any of this dark color up in that really pretty. You have to do this while it's still kind of damp. That really pretty light color. I don't want any of this dark color up in there. You're gonna thin out your your lines. You have to do it while it's damp. Okay, so that that is a fairly simple way to glaze. And I think it it adds a lot of depth to the painting to get the get the richness down at the bottom. That's what we want to show with our glazing. That this is ultra dark down here. All right, I've wiped that uh, water glaze off, and. Now I'm going to show you how to glaze with a glazing liquid. And the only color in my water is this Payne's Gray, which is almost blue. It's a really dark color, but it, it's beautiful. I think if I had to choose a favorite color in golden paints, it would be a cross between magenta and this Payne's Gray. And interestingly enough, if you mix this Payne's Gray with magenta, you have a gorgeous violet. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, and, and the difference, when you're putting on water with paint that's super thin, what you're doing is you're creating a glaze, a, a water-based glaze we're just basically painting a thin coat of a darker color over your painting. And when you're using a glazing liquid, you're really pushing the pigment around that's in the paint. And you have to be a little careful, and I may make some mistakes here, but when you're putting a glazing liquid on, uh, your paint will bunch up where your brush goes. So we're gonna start by just putting a thick coat of a little water on there. A thick coat of paint across the bottom. And I'm going to bring some glazing liquid into it because I want to thin it out and I want to push it around. 
and I'm going to push it with the glazing liquid. I'm not going to put any more of the paint on my brush. I'm just going to push it around, push the paint around with my brush. And I've got it pretty darn thick. So I may have to thin this out with some water, but it's a little trickier to get paint on with the glazing liquid. It's okay on the sides because you're basically pushing the pigment around. Take some of that paint off my brush. Take some of the glazing liquid off my brush. I'm just going to get glazing liquid this time with no paint in it. I'm pushing the pigment around. I don't, wish I had gotten a little Q-tip. I may have to just take a little brush of some sort, maybe this one, because I don't want to cover up my. I don't want to cover up my little orange bits. I'll have to pull them out in a second, but this glazing liquid will dry on you pretty quick. So what I'm doing now is just trying to get rid of my brush strokes. I've got my pebbles in there. I've got plenty of paint on the canvas. And I'm just pushing the paint around, pushing that pigment around. Pushing that pigment around. And wash it all off. Go back into the glazing liquid. I'm gonna pull this bit here. I want to pull it around. And go up in that little spot of water there. I feel like I have too much glazing liquid in there. It's kind of sticky. I'm going in clear water now. Clear that completely up. Get all the pigment out of my brush. And go over to some fresh glazing liquid that has no pigment in it. Just water, glazing liquid. I'm gonna go in here, try to pull some of that pigment out. have a smaller brush put glazing liquid on it and try to get up in here with a little less obvious brush strokes get some of that out There is a little fine bit, a fine bit of the dark color across the back there. See where I can pick up some pigment without just a fine bit of the darker color through there. I'm going to 
clear water again. And this, this time my brush has absolutely nothing on it. And I'm just trying to knock down some of that edge that I have on my pretty, pretty, my pretty cloud. Knock down some of the edge on it. So that it's still glowy without having too much of an edge to it. So over here, pick some of that up. So I need a Q-tip, but I can use plain water and pull, pull some of this paint off. It's covering up my pushing that pigment around. Knock the edge out of it. Need some glazing liquid here. Kind of blend that out. Oops. Try to pull that pigment out and instead I'm putting pigment in there. It's not good. Take my little bitty brush again. And get in here and clean some of this out where my pretty glowy cloud is. Especially in the center. That's where I want it to really glow. Picking up some of this color, moving it out. Put a little bit more pigment down here. There's some pigment on there. Shoreline. Okay. Now that's two different ways you can glaze. One using a, one using glazing liquid, and one using um, let me get some of that color out of my pretty water I had going up in there. I like it better looking like a wet spot. That's good. I do have some lighter dots in here that I'd like to darken up a little bit. Put a little bit more pigment on the bottom part with some glazing liquid in my brush and some pigment in my brush. And just darken that up a little bit. There we go. I think I look better. Some little spot right here. 
just dabbing it ever so slightly so that my pulling pigment off so that my little pieces of cloud show through that I worked so hard on. Pulling that pigment off the canvas. Pulling the gray, gray pigment off. do that too much because if I keep doing it what I'll do is I'll end up with streaks in my in my painting that I don't want like right in here I use some of this glazing liquid Let's kind of blend that out a little bit better this is glazing liquid on here shift and move move that pigment around a little bit so it's blended in there a little better there we go now you can still see the outline of the tidal pool but it's almost like a shadow has come over it. I've zoomed in on the water that's in the bay. And I think as one final touch to get this painting right, if you'll notice in the water, there is a shadow from these clouds. The shadow there, a faint shadow here. A uh, little space, and then under these larger clouds, there's a little more color in the water. This has a kind of peachy color with the blue. And it's not going to take much paint at all. Probably if you have just a little paint left on your old palette, you can do this. You don't need uh, new paints. And like I say, it's, it's very faint. What we're going to use from our old palette is the gray and that little rosy color. And we really need next to nothing on our paintbrush. And what little bit we have is going to be watered down tremendously. And this is my brush. You see it has very, very little paint on it. And we're going to go just up under these larger clouds and put just a bit of shadow. There's a little bit of larger shadow here. Maybe take that in this direction and get some of that paint off the brush. And here we have some...
bright piece of sunlight coming through there. You get some of that color off of that indentation, that cloud there. <coughs> Not quite under it. Okay, so in the breaks of cloud, we have some lighter color. That's a very low cloud. It's not casting much of a shadow. It's a big cloud, a big cloud, big cloud, big cloud, big cloud, big cloud. We've got some cloud shadow in the water. <coughs> okay, now to brighten that up just a tad, I'm looking for my yellow ochre. And I'm going to take some of this liquid white and yellow ochre. That's the color we put in the sky here, pretty much. I'm just going to brighten up a couple of those spots in between. In between the clouds. See how this does. And we just want a faint little bit of yellow color. There's a sort of green hue to that water. But then there's also in between these clouds, cloud spaces, a little bit more of that yellow ochre. Again, I'm putting this on my brush. Just ever so slightly to kind of draw some of that yellow in there. Get that yellow back. It's on green water, but there's a little brightness from, you see how that bright yellow, put some of that yellow back in there, in the water. Barely touching the canvas just to get a little of the yellow from the sky here back into the top part of that water there. I don't want to put too much into that. In fact, I think that cloud could be a little a little grayer on this side. There we go. Pop that through. Okay. I don't think that's too much yellow. Tap a little bit of it out. the canvas but not just a hint a hint of the yellow in the water. Go through here I've taken the yellow ochre with the white and just a just a drop of yellow ochre the white and the uh, just a speck of blue and made that soft green again and I'm just kind of going over the there I want to be able to see the shadows, but I don't want to change the color of my water. So I'm putting some of this soft green back in here. And there we go. You can still see the shadows in the water, but they're not as pronounced. And you can see the soft green of the, of the, Of the water and still see the shadows in the water. Different colors in the water. Get a little bit of this pink back in here. 
the pink in here a little bit. Just to bring back just a bit, a bit of a hint of the color. Just sort of dry brushing it in there. out some of the green and put just a very faint hint of color back on there. Pull some of that out so you can see. Just basically wiping off some of the green so you can still see the shadow. I don't want it faint, but you get a balance that suits you working with the the green and the and the water and the blues that balance suits me pretty fine I still see my shadows in the water I still have the green of my water and sort of a green color some yellow highlights and Still see the clouds and the water. Put a glaze, put a glaze of that green back on that that water. And that green again is made up of a white with a little of the a couple of drops of the yellow oxide and a speck of blue. A couple of specks, tiny specks, like on the tip of your brush, blue, and then stir it up, and you should get a pretty faint green to put back in the water. And that's almost the color that comes in here, but this is a little bit more light on it, so it's a, a lighter color. And I think at this point, I'm gonna sign it, call it good. I like that I have my shadows in the water from the clouds. Uh, it makes the water look a little bit more realistic and a little less still. It is very much still water. Uh, you know, still, I mean, as in calm, calm water. Uh, but it does have some of the cloud reflection on it. And let's see if I can hold this up. You can see it. I'm liking the way it looks. I'm going to call it good. Get a signature on it down here in black. Put a signature on it and we'll call that one good y'all have fun